on the Pasik Shoftim Veshoytim Titlum Gol Shan Racham. So the Arizal and Sefer Lekutim. So Shoftim Veshoytim Titlum Gol Shan Racham means Shoftim Veshoytim. The difference between a Shoftim and a Shoftim, a Shoftim means a judge. A judge, Pshat, is a judge being someone that's using his Seichel, his understanding to judge. And a Shoftim is just the enforcer. So that's the person that's the Maisa, the person of action. So there's a shaifer and there's a shaita. You can have a shaita. You can have someone that's a watchman. He doesn't understand why, what, when. He's just standing and protecting. But the shaifer has the seich. It's important. Why is it saying in the Pasik? There was many shaifer, many judges and enforcers you should place to you in your shah, in your, in your, in your gates. I should say for you, in plural, for your gates. Truth is that the idea of Shaitan and Shaitan can be understood also internally. Now, what does Shaitan and Shaitan mean? That every single person has different Sha'arim, different gates, different openings. For example, Shar Haroy is the Shar of, of seeing, the, the gate. The path of seeing is through the eye. Shar Hashem, who has naim, the path of hearing is through the ears. Shar Dibur speech is through the mouth. Shar Hareach, af, smell is through the nose. Shar Mishush, I hear naim, raglayim. Mishush, touching is through primarily, this is which you have stronger in your sense, your sense of feeling it through your hands, and what you can touch generally is through your hands and your feet. Im ke tzara chatam shiyah, so we'll shoyftim v'shoyftim v'chol yad v'shoyim. This is the Pasuk says that you have to place shoyftim v'shoyim v'chol sharecha, you should place it you should place shoiftim, judges, meaning you should do this intentionally. The shoiftim also is enforcing what should come in. What does that mean? So simply what this means, person should make sure that his eyes are clean. That the first, the Kedusha comes first, Kedusha Sainayim, that make sure that what you look at, always try to look at things that are positive. Also, a person shouldn't try to, to close his ears, not to listen to things that are not appropriate. Certainly, a person shouldn't speak nivel A person shouldn't curse. Let's speak of chilos. A person shouldn't smell things that are negative. A person shouldn't touch things, of course. A person shouldn't go to theaters, etc. Especially theaters the way it was then. Therefore, it says in the Pasuk, it refers to in the individual. Therefore, the Pasuk says, when a person protects his sh'arim, his gates, from all types of sin, from all types of negativity, whatever, if you protect yourself on one level, then you open yourself up to another level, to another gate. So this is what the results, this is the Torah Zari, basically say from the Kutim, basically saying that it's a, it's a chassidish pshat, it's not like it's uh, yeah. not very not the case Ari, but this is a pshat, it's an Ari, this, you find this a lot of times in Chaim Etal. Chaim Etal also wrote a sefer called Kriya Eitz. It's a Dastan. So the Sefer is not from the Torah's Darizal, it's his own Torah, it's on the Parshish, and it's Pshat. Pshat from Zerush, there's no, there's no, this seems like this the type of Torah that he has on that Sefer. Okay, so that's the, the correct. So we we'll try to understand a little bit what the Shi'arim are. Obviously this is a big topic to talk about this, because on a superficial level, very simple level, he's talking about creating gates and proper enforcers to what you see. But... Okay, that's that's simple. That you what you see, making sure that you protect your eyes, you protect your ears, and the shmeres and etc. etc. Um, but each of these things, each of these five senses, we talked about elaborated in more detail. What exactly are the five senses, and what exactly are they related to, in terms of what this means? Because it's not just about what to see, but it's how you see it. Because how you're seeing it actually is even a more darkistic way, because We'll learn a little bit deeper, but you know, seeing is one thing, and then there's the interpretation of what you see. When it talks about Yosef at Sadik, the Gemara says in Zohar that Yosef at Sadik was Rav uh, v'loy v'loy nene v'loy zom. That 
It's the type of seeing where you're not taking on dog, you're not taking nourishment. So there's a way to see even things that are necessarily not such not appropriate where you're not taking pleasure. And then there's something that you're looking at something even that could be theoretically not so not or maybe even appropriate, but you're seeing it in a negative way. And the Khib Salavovas brings down Mashem Hasid Echav, he says that there's that um, that you know when a, with a carcass, you know, because they were walking with there was the this Khasadech was walking with um with this Talmidim and they saw a dead carcass of an animal and the Talmidim said, look a kind of smelly, disgusting animal and the the Chassid, the, the Rebbe said, but the, look at its white teeth, you know, because you can always, uh, you can always, you can always look at something else. You can see the white, you can see its, you can see its teeth, which means you can see something that's negative, and you can look at it as positive. Everything, everything you can see in two different ways. But we're trying to understand this a little bit more. The two things we want to talk about, maybe, maybe two, two of these sharim. This is a shar, the shar of seeing. And the shar of shar of seeing and the shar of food of the mouth. So let's start like this. Um, so does the do the kator? Yeah, we'll start with the signs. The do the kator from the from the Hashem that the bar Michael Chofe. So it's from the Tolz Yaakov Yosef of the Kudai. But this is a famous story in Balsham. I'll tell you how this, this, this started, this idea of this, because someone came over to me and asked me a Shiloh, and then I looked in the mouth there, and the Shiloh is not such a good Shiloh, but the, the Shiloh, this is what the Shiloh, the Shiloh was, it says in the Balsham, Bals- and it says in the Balsham, is that whatever you see on the outside is a Mara, is really a reflection of what's going on inside. If you see something on the outside, it's really a reflection of what's going on inside. So, because you saw, because you saw one thing, so the way it would, person asked the child that the question was if, if it says that the reason why you saw this thing is because previously you saw some, something else and this is a defect from what you saw before now you're seeing it you're seeing another another image so he said but what, what caused the first thing that you saw what was the original thing that you saw so it, it can always go back you say the reason why I saw this because I really saw that or something negative the reason why I saw the uh, negative thing in the past which was, so what's the what's the ri- origin of this idea so I told him which is I'll tell you why it's not monstrous but I, what I told them is that that in Torah's Chassidus in general, and specifically in the Torah's Balsham, the, the Mokir, the Balsham is not so interested in what we'll call uh, theology or philosophy. The Balsham is not interested in talking about something that's existing in some cosmic spiritual realm, that there's Oedel Matzilah somewhere that you're doing something and it's having an effect on the spiritual realm above. Or the philosophy of it, how exactly it works. That's not really what the, the Torah of is. The Balsham is interested in the Torah Sanefesh, in the person, in the Avodah Sadam, in the, the practical Avodah, the practical person's Avodah. So, therefore, what the Balsham will say is that the moment you ask the question of why you saw something, that's the moment that the thing becomes relevant. So, if let's say a person is walking down the street and not asking the question, <coughs> So they see a bunch of different images, but they never ask the question, why am I seeing this image? So the image that they saw actually means nothing to them. But the moment they ask the question, why am I seeing this image? That's the moment that that thing becomes a truism. In other words, it becomes true once you ask the question. You know, there's a famous word that the Kotzka once said, and where's the Abish is found? Where's Hashem found? Hashem is found is where you, where you let him in. So most people think either it's like a shtickle cute word, or it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a philosophy or a theology. No, but it's it's, it's an avoidable word, saying that where is Hashem actually found? When you let him in, that's where Hashem is actually found. Which means What does it actually mean in the reverse? If I don't let Kadosh Baruch into this place, Kaviyachol, Kadosh Baruch is not found there. In other words, if I don't, if I think that the symptoms keep shooting, right? If I think there's little keep shooting and Hashem is not present in here. Hashem's talking not present in here. I don't know what that means, Hashem's talking not, but that's what it actually means to me. To me, Hashem's not present there. You're following? It's not just, to, it's not only to, this is the way it is, because the way it is is only to, relevant to me. It's always about the, it's always about the Nefesh Adam. It's always about how my relationship to the thing that I'm seeing, to the, to the experience that I'm having. 
and so again, so you have to understand this. You saw God in Torah Sachsivus that that everything that Arizal talked about, in, a, in a, let's call it an abstract level, because Arizal wasn't abstract. But the way we simply the way you read Kisari, you're seeing it as an abstract level. In Torah Sachsivus, it's not an abstract level. It's actually a nafshes level. So it talks about Atzilus. Atzilus is Atzilus within you. The dag of Atzilus within you. It talks about the the mid is talking the mid is you talking about Kaddish Baruch. It's, it's the madrega, the soy v'kalam, the soy v'kalam within you in your relationship to Kaddish Baruch Hu. It's always about you, because that's the ikir. The ikir is the you in the, in the experience. So when you see something, and you're not asking a question why you're seeing it, so there's no you. If there's no you, you didn't really see it. You're following. It's only when you ask the question and say, why did I see it, then it becomes actually relevant to you, and therefore it actually becomes something that's becoming revealed to you. But if you look in the, in the, in the, in, in, in the teachings, the actual Torah of the Baal Shem, you'll see that when he talks about seeing, it seems to, he seems to say three different things. We'll try to understand it. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Just for comprehension. Yeah. So, an example of the Pats or someone's yeah. in some place. And so, what if... Another person, what if there's 10 people there? Yeah. And nine of them said, Hashem is here. And one of them is like, Is That's Hashem here? That's the word. So for that one person, he's not there. Correct. But for everyone else, it could Correct. be. Correct. Correct. That's okay. the word. That's not the word. So it's for perception. It's, it's, you see, you know, when you say that, okay. when you say that, it makes it sound like it's just in your mind. Okay. You understand? It's just my perception says that a Kodesh Baruch was there. It's not, no. It's not only your perception is everything, because it's we're only talking about you. It's not like oh, it's only from my perspective. It seems like this week okay. There is only my perspective. In the, in the in the nefesh of other, there is only me. You're following? In 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 my life, there's only me, and in my life, it's there. If I see it this way, then it's there. It's not only my perception is there. No, if my perception is that means it's there. Okay, I think you're, this you're, relates to back to the Chol Derech Echad I have be. to actively draw Correct. it down. Correct, yeah, yeah. You have to actively... You, the, 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 Chassidus says, the main thing that Baal Shem is saying is, you have to show up to the picture. If you're not showing up to the picture, we can talk mm-hmm. about that the Ebesh is Achtas Hashem and his oneness of Hashem and all these very, very lofty levels. But me, whatever, I'm just... I, I'm like, I'm an outsider, an objective person observing these things. Baal Shem says, okay, I'm not interested in that person. I'm not, that's not Chassidus. Chassidus is that I want, I want, I want the other Where's the person in the experience? Yeah, you understand? Yeah, there's knowledge and there's living. With You're correct, exactly. The knowledge yeah. is an abstract. I can't understand it. It's, that's, that's a philosophy. That's it. The Baal Shem is not a philosopher and not a th- he's not a theologian. He's not interested in the abstract. He's not interested mm-hmm. in the, 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 subje- the objective. He's interested in the, subje- in the experience. You understand? He's interested in the oil, in the actual mm-hmm. experience of what it is. If you're experiencing it, it's real, it's here. If you're not experiencing it, it's not here. The Mishnah says, Who is a Chachma Lebi Kolodom? Who's why? Someone who learns from every person. Someone who looks in the mirror, someone looks in the mirror. So you see the reflection in the mirror. So if you have, let's say, a scratch on your nose, you look in the mirror, you see the scratch. Same thing also. If you see a Chasarim, if you see some type of default, some type of defect in another person, you shouldn't, your idea, you know. Now, why are you seeing it within the other person? Because you know that you you have the same you have the same defect within yourself. So the reason why you're seeing it is because it's actually a reflection of you. Which means if you didn't have this within your character, if you were looking in a mirror and you didn't have a scratch on your nose, you wouldn't see the scratch, right? Now, if you say that every person is your mirror, which means it's showing you what's going on within your life. So why is that person showing? Why is that person being projected to you this certain way? Is because you have a certain. In other words, we never see things the way they actually are. We we see things the way we are. Let's say you're in a good mood, right? And you're feeling very elated. So you look at things and you see it one way. If you're in a bad mood, you see things another way. So what you're really seeing is not something that's really objective. It's really subjective. So it, it dependent on you. So if you had this chesaron. Then you would see it in the chasar, in the other person, this this default in the other person. But if you didn't have this chasar, if that was not, if you if you didn't, uh, you know, if that was not occupying your mind, you wouldn't see that chasar in another person. You see, a person is is, is a procrastinator, I'm sorry, is a kratzer. Yeah. Okay, if you're not a kratzer, you won't even know what the guy is doing. But if you have this 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 this, ink, this same tendency, the same tab, then you would see that within that. You would see a reflection. But what happens if you see something physically? 
I'm leaving the Chavo Shabbos. Okay, we're going to talk about that's exactly that's that, that's what yeah, we're saying. That's why the, recently, okay, that's why we're going to see this 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 this. This, uh, this is a very good question. That's why we're going to see this three things that he's saying, three mavish different things. Everyone blo- everyone puts these three toys together. Yeah. They're actually saying it's three separate things. The first thing is he's saying is that when you see a default a chesar in another person, it's only because there's a chesar in you. That's it. You can't see a chesar in another person if it was not the chesar in you. If you didn't have a scratch, you wouldn't see it in another person's mouth. Shaninu, that's the same toy that he brings down in the Visholim. Shaninu, call him the guy and the chutzman geyats. A person can see all the mega, all the defects in another person besides on the guy. Pirish of Rabbi Shemtiv, call him the guy. Shalom Rabbi Chutz. Every person, the Rabbi Shemtiv reads this 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 phrase in the Mishnah a little different. Call him the guy. Shalom Rabbi Chutz. Kama. All the guy that a person sees chutz outside of himself. He should know minigiyatz. It's a It comes actually from his own negiyatz, from his own nega. If you're poisel and so on, it's a moment poisel. If you see a defect in another person, this is coming from a defect that exists within with with perception or self. So that's the first level of the Torah. You see, you're right. It's a it's a certain quality with in, in a perception. You're not just seeing a wall, a table. You see, you're seeing a chesar in the other person. You're seeing a defect in the other person, says the Bolshemi. If you're seeing the defect in the other person, you should know that really there's something going on within you, and therefore you're able to, you're, you're projecting. So sort of, you're seeing is not a pure seeing, it's not objective, there's a, there's a projection. So that's the first the level. Of the term. As the first this is the first level of the same, same term. The same term, it comes from the inside, the inside of you, therefore you're seeing the outside of you. Now, Kuf Chavches, he says, another shtick, another little bit, a little bit different. This is the famous story. But he brings it down, and I'll see the way he translates it a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Uh, that there was someone told him that he saw Shechil and Shabbos. Someone told him that there was uh, that the person was Mechal Shabbos. He said, Rebbe, Shabbat Atzma, Yesh Lechel and Baver Zoom. That the reason why you saw the Chil and Shabbos in another person is because. There was a chil shabbos within yourself, a small measure of that chil shabbos. Kibba atz may also meinze, mashe ishtamish in talmid chom, chachem shadoim in the shabbos, nikr shabbos. So therefore, since he was shabbos in talmid chom, he he actually he did something. He asked on talmid chom to do work for him. So therefore, he saw shabbos. Now, minispashit aver zois achin is gashem v'aver oisa achin aver gmul shechil shabbos. This is a new shnit in the Torah. They say. Now he's saying like this that. Everything is interconnected. Whatever happens outside of you, whatever is happening in the in the world that's outside of you, again, from your from you seeing the world that's outside of you, you should know that everything is actually a spashtus of your own nefesh. Everything is actually originating from you. So we'll say that there's some type of level of of interconnectivity. I don't know if he means dafka tzadik. It's, 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 it's at some place. I think the Eichel Abroche brings and the Kamana brings the dafka tzadik. But it, let's just say that the Balshem is talking about every single person. What he's saying is like this: that whatever you're experiencing outside of you, you should know, is not just a reflection, a projection. That's reflection of why you're seeing it because you're seeing it something within yourself. But it's actually an ispashtus of you. You are actually causing the things that you're being that's being shown to you. That if you have a certain level of Shabbos on a very darkistic eifin, a very darkistic level, you're gonna eventually gonna see chil Shabbos in a more gasistic eifin. Mm. So what it mo- it means it moves from the inside to the outside. But again, it's all in relationship to your to the world around you. Since the relationship to the world around you is that there is, everything is not just not there's no things that are objective outside. Of you. Nothing is 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 external to you. In the Torah of Hashem, right? This is the Oymik of the Torah of Hashem. Yeah. That is nothing external to you. External, we don't talk about because we're not. There's nothing to talk about. Yeah. Well, it's not you. So what are we talking about? We're only talking about things that are internal, that are, are part of your life. Since we're talking about only part of your life, what happens if you see something external that someone else did something that was wrong, right? So what does that have to do with me? Okay, now you're saying if I see a chesar in a person, a defect in a person, I can say okay, it's a defect in me. But I see a person doing something that doesn't seem like a chesar, not. Person not angry. If there's a person doing a certain act that I don't understand, that's a violation of Shabbos. So here we're saying is you should know that on a more oimic level, not only is it coming from you, but it's actually it's it it cut. It's a manifestation from you. You whatever you do in your world will become projected outside your world as well. Mm-hmm. First in the Gaza's way, then in the in the, in the, the how in does it affect somebody else? How does your Hello Shabbos of Talmud Chacham? Make the other person's other 
Over gas over no. So this this this. Okay. okay so good. Av avade. So we have to think like this. That person also has a story. In other words, from my perspective, the reason why that person did that is because of me. From his perspective, the reason why that person did that was because of him. You know, so that, that's, that, 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 that's the beauty of the story. He's saying, always think about himself. yourself. <laughs> Don't say, the other person has rape, he did, he did a very, okay, that's, that's his, that's true, that's his story. I'm always interested in my story, you should always be interested in your story, yeah? Meaning to say, on a deeper level, that this person, if, if it wasn't meant for me to see, then I wouldn't have seen it, and it would have been Chilo Shabbos privately. It could be. Meaning yeah, that if yeah, it was yeah. only relevant yes, to him yes. and it wasn't caused Correct. from someone else, Correct. it Correct. wouldn't be seen. If, I, if, it's, if it's not part of my screen of reality, yeah. which is my subjective reality, then it's not part of my then it's not then then, then it, it wouldn't be exist, then, then it wouldn't exist. So the fact that it's exists, you must say that it comes from my, my internal reality. Mm. In other words, everything is gonna be me expanded outward. So whatever I experience in this world, I always have to say if it's an expansion from me to the outside, it must be coming from me. Mm. Now, of course, that other person has to say the exact same thing. Mm. And every person has to say that. Okay, so these are two, two, le- these are two steps, two steps deep. Now, the first step is that there's a chassar in the person, therefore it's a defect in the person, therefore you see the defect in the outside. Now, he's saying it's not only a defect in the person, it's actually a spacious for you, because really, in, in, the, the Torah is interested in you, always is interested in you, yeah? Is it because the Kol Yisrael are ready to love that, and one action can react to You could say else? that, I don't think that he means that. I don't think that's what he means. No, I don't think that he means that. Okay, so you could say that? that. You could say the pshat is that all neshamas are mushers and everything is is connected. The muscle of the the, the muscle of the yeshami when it talks about uh, about uh, about uh, about the sikkim or the sita. So the yeshami brings a muscle is that there was a there's a person on a boat, and I'm sorry, there's a there's a hand one hand one part one you know your hand did something wrong. Let's say did, so, so you slap the hand. You don't slap your own hand. It's the same. It's the same hand. So the yeshami brings the same thing. It's a guf echad. Okay, so therefore everything is interrelated. That's on one level. Cloud. It's a, yeah, it's a practical. Okay, you don't have to go to that Torah because that everyone before the Moshavim would say the same thing. <laughs> everyone would say the same thing. Say that what what shot? Everyone called us all in Zanasah. It's a varim of the varim de Shechina. This was the yad in the Torah Sarizal. This Adam Kadman that before says is another prop. So therefore everything is is is, is connected. No, the Moshavim just wants to say something much deeper. Hashem is, 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 is it's a much it's a much deeper bar. Say yes, it's true. Each part is a bar Ashkina. The yeah, that you, you act on each part of part one thing. But Hashem says, I I'm interested in you, always. You always have to be you. Therefore, you always have to ask if in my world something is happening, how is it negate into my world? What is in the game tomorrow? Well, yes, on a maybe it also is connected. So, but Kol Yisrael is not necessarily connected to me. Yes, it is on some level correctly, but not connectively on my subjective level. I don't know if there's a good word subjective, but this is the word. The word that's subjective is that that the chassidus is that's why the it's it, the nimshal toyosari, and in, according to chassidus, is the nimshal toyosari is the avodas adam. Avodas adam is me, me, me in my relationship to David, me in relation to myself, me in relation to other people. This is all. This is the this is my world. That's the only world that I know. That's why you'll never ever find in 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 in, in, in the Balshev any. Any oasis that he talks about things that are outside the personal experience, personal experience. He doesn't talk. He doesn't use such language. And ever, ever in the Torah, Hashem. Even when he talks about Mashiach, he talks about Mashiach Aprati. He doesn't talk about anything clawless. It's, it's always about you. What you? Your Mashiach is Yechidish Shemanafesh. Is is a high level. Of that. Everything's going to be about you because that's the experience. What we are experiencing. If you want to talk philosophy, okay, take a course in the Rambam. Take a course to understand the philosophy. You want to talk Chassidus? So say it's me. It's my subjective. This is the second, the second schnitt, the second, the second level of this. But then it gets, it seems to say even, a, even a, a further vort. And this is the third vort. So the first, the first word is the chesar natsma. Therefore, you see the chesar natsulas. The second vort is that it's an extension of you. It's an iskashim. Therefore, you're seeing it manifest as it's in the akshama level, the way it becomes revealed. And the third vort in kuchav zayin from the avanachal. They re- it seems to say the same. They all seem to say the same word, but it's if you read closely, they're actually very different. Okay, this is the Apostle Shemtov Amar. Keisha she unaki legami loy pogim klal moelam afil kol shuma. E after leaders rabbi shuma. 
A person that is completely clean, lucky legami, loy pogam kla ma'olam, a person that's mahamash at tzadik amor. He actually, a person cannot see bad. There's a guy that avort, there's a avort, there's a chilek between Well, the was between the Baditchiver and the, the Vizusha that, that the Baditchiver saw that even the Ra is Toiv. Shem Shem Baruch Hamal Arak, the Kaf of Achmat, the Toiv, the Kaf of Arak. They saw that, the, that even the negative is positive. And the Vizusha never saw the Ra. That you know the famous story that the Magid once sent someone to the Vizusha, to Shem Shem Baruch Hamal, so he asked the Magid, and he said, he sent the Vizusha, he came to the Vizusha, and the Vizusha, I don't know, I don't know what the Shaivas, but what he asked him. In other words, not that I see Ra, but I justify it as Toiv. I say the Ra is not, okay, I don't see that. I see it as a Toiv. I don't, I don't even know I don't even know the conversation. Right? I see this Baruch Hatev It's not, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, So this is, this is, uh, Yev Shalir Shum Ba'adam doesn't mean that you, you see a person's negative and you justify it. You say, okay, the really, okay, is, is a Timish Shanishba, this is the reason that a person was raised and his parents and trauma, okay, that's a good, that's, that's also, that's already a Madrig. That's right, buddy. The EF shall literally shoot Rabbi Adam. You actually don't even see it. What are you talking about? I never saw the person's eye. I only see his toy. But then he says like this There's a new conversation there. There's a new conversation there. First conversation is it comes from you. Then the conversation is to project. Now, the Abishah. The Abishah, Hashem will not show a person that is toy. Completely good will not show a person ra. Therefore, when a person sees something that's negative, a person that does something negative, or they tell him a story about something that's bad, you should know for sure that you have something that's connected to that particular thing. And therefore, Hashem brought you to see that thing and to hear that thing. So a person should do tshuva from that particular thing that you saw. And therefore, when you do tshuva, the reason why you saw it is double-ended. You saw it, so you should do tshuva. Therefore, the other person will do tshuva when you do tshuva because you're interconnected. Because yeah. you only did it because you did something wrong. So okay, correct, you correct, correct, correct. You undo it, you connect it, exactly. Therefore, a person never talked to Lashon Har and his friend. After all, he said, "Avera, avera, I should show him Ishin." I'm in Shalas Avera. The Hamizeshu Roy Shom Adavar, who Mizeh Yira. When you hear Lashon Har about another person, you should know Mizeh Yishim Stam Megam Ba'atzvei Gamim Mikasoyz Adavar. Therefore, you know for sure that you have part of this problem, the same thing. Umutol Olu Sakanoy Sadavar Who, and therefore. Instead of speaking negative about the other person, do tshuva. Not only will you do tshuva, will you correct it, but through your own correcting. You, what are you worried about the person? That the person spoke, the, 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 the person talk, says Lashon Hara about another person, something bad about another person. So, okay, you're, you're, you're a fine yid, you feel bad that the other person did not bear. Really? You're really a fine yid? So do tshuva. You know why? Because if you do tshuva, the other person will do tshuva. But here, the word that he seems to add is ki yazmul lo yashem yizbarach liris ra'ar lishmo yashum ra. That means that it's, that the hazmana, that there's something, there's an intentionality. So the first thing is, I just, let's try to understand this, and we'll go to another Torah one to understand this. That the first thing is, if you see something wrong in another person, know that the only reason why you can see something wrong in another person is because there's something wrong within you. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing from something from you. The second level is, if there's something wrong in the other person, someone's doing something negative, you should know that it's an extension of you. It comes from you. It's like the manifestation of something that came from you in a darkistic way now became revealed. The third thing is he's saying is that if you see something wrong, if you see something wrong, you should know that the reason why you're seeing it is because Hashem is Baruch Hashem is actually choosing, this is like a conscious choice that, that, that Hashem is Baruch is creating a certain Hashgacha that you should be able to see this thing. So now the shaila is, what is it? At, what is this third thing adding? What is it? What, what do we need? Kavyach, what, is it, what do we need to kavyach? What do we need to Hashem Okay, if it comes from me, it's extension of me, it's projection of me. I don't need the whole, the whole, the whole business of the Abishah coming in 
Ki Azmul Hashem is Baruch Hashkach Prata. So I don't need it. What do I need this Torah? What do I need to add that Ki Azmul Hashem is Baruch? So if you look in Aiken, I think we have the next page. He talks about Achila. I think this is going to be the clue to understand that Hashem. Next page over here. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Close to now. Okay, so the one of the famous big toys of Hashem, one of the famous toys that Hashem came to reveal is what? Ashkaka Pratis. Okay? So what does Ashkaka Pratis mean? That there's a divine particular providence. What is the general understanding of Ashkaka Pratis? Is that up until a certain period of time, Many of the Roshonim believed that there was Ashkacha Klolis. There was like a general Ashkacha. A general Ashkacha means an overseeing, a providence. And Hashem wants this thing to, to, to unfold. But the Pratim, how it unfolds, the details, it's not so relevant exactly how it unfolds, right? Um, what's Ashkacha Pratis? Ashkacha Pratis means that not only is it generally interesting, Hashem wants you to be married to this person. Okay, that's part of Ashkacha. This is a Klolis type of thing. How are you going to meet the person? When are you going to meet the person? When are you going to get married? Okay, that's already, that's Pratim. Not relevant. Where are you going to get married? Who's going to be the musician? Who cares? These are already Pratim. So the Ashkaka Klala says, I'm interested in the cloud. This is what I want to happen. This is what I want to, ha- to unfold. But the Prat, I'm not really interested. Comes, come, comes along with Balsham and reveals no, that there's Ashkaka Pratis. Ashkaka Pratis means that even a tiny little leaf that turns around and turns around is Bashkaka Pratis. Is a very specific divine. Now, in the Rishonim, specifically in the Rambam, the Rambam makes a distinction between Ashkach Klolis and Ashkach Pratius, between Klolis Abriya, in general in the Abriya, let's say a zebra in the, in the, in the Serengeti is, is, is Ashkach Klolis. It's a Klolis like thing that Hashem wants there should be zebras in, in Africa. And then there's Ashkacha Pratis in the Mina Anushis, a, a particular Mina Anushis, a particular man, and especially a person that rises, and a person that's a chassid, a ma'ula, someone that's, that rises at a spiritual level, a tzaddik, whatever, a person that rises spiritually, the more a person evolves spiritually in his own particular life, the, the higher he rises from a level of, of in the animal kingdom, which in the animal kingdom is Ashkacha Klolis, the higher he, he reaches a, a madrega within the Anushri Yisrael Adam, that's the higher level that he reaches a more Ashkacha Pratis. So it's like a slip, it's a sliding scale according to the Rambam. Meaning, you choose to be become more Ashkacha Pratis. It's a choice. In other words, I, if you live like an animal, and you live, okay, you live by instincts only, and just by your, by your nature, just like any animal in the world, then you fall under the, the general group of Ashkacha Klolis. But if you choose to live intentionally with Kavana, which means that you choose to live Bahashkacha pra, Pratius of your own life, not the Abishan Ashkacha, but you choose to, 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 to be Bepratius Ashkacha in your own life. I'm choosing exactly how am I going to get up? What am I going to do minute to minute, right? Different than an animal, because an animal doesn't choose the, the Pratius of his life. So if you choose the Ashkacha Pratius in your own life, the Raman doesn't use this language. Raman doesn't use this language. If you use that Ashkach of Pratis in your own life, then it becomes more Pratis. What does it mean? Becomes more. I'm going to understand. This, 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 this is the shit to Sabal. This is the shit. This is this is the shit to Um What that actually means, we have to understand. What does it mean? It, it, so I, I would say that very superficially, okay. This, there's a difference. We actually talked about this once. The difference between a Afsharia Metzias and a Mechuyiv Metzias, okay. That a shari mitzvah is a possible existence, and mechuyiv mitzvah is inevitable in existence. It has to be. The only mechuyiv mitzvah that there is in this world is the Ebeshtah. The only mechuyiv mitzvah, the only mechuyiv that has to be is the Creator, right? Everything that's a, crea- a creation by definition is totally in an Elohim, right? in a Creator. So therefore, it's an shari mitzvah. It's a possibility of existence. It could be, and it could be not. Now, the the of the, the because we, we we live, we're a creation, we live as an Afshari Amitsias, as a possible existence. The more we connect ourselves to the Boyer, in other words, 
the more we connect ourselves to the mukhri of Amitsiyas, to the absolute existence, the, 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 the needing to be existence, the more we become a mukhri of Amitsiyas. In other words, because if, if I'm just an Acharya Amitsiyas, if I'm just a, a creation, so I'm just, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the dependent, I was created by the, by the creator, so therefore I'm just Acharya Amitsiyas. But if I do something that is connected, if, if I do mahu af ata, in other words, if I do an act that is, that's, that's, that's a boyer act, kaviyachol, like the idea of mitzvah misyachas al atzmos, the idea that I do something that's zeratz and Hashem, that's part of the mechui of amitzias, right? If I do something that's in the mechui of amitzias, then I become part of the mechui of amitzias, right? So that's the same, the same concept in another in another way is to say the difference between Ashkach HaKlolis and Ashkach HaKlolis. Ashkach HaKlolis, there's no Mechuyi of Amitziyas in Ashkach HaKlolis. Ashkach HaKlolis is, nothing's of Mechuyi of Amitziyas. It could be different also. It, it, the the, the Mechuyi of Amitziyas is the cloud that this thing has to get to this point. How it gets there, doesn't. it's not relevant, all these details. Right? The, the, but that's Afshari Amitziyas. In the Mechuyi of Amitziyas, every single detail matters. So if you make your life, every single detail matters. Connected to the boyer where every single detail matters, the more your details matter. So the more mechuyim and you become, the more hashkacha you become, the more hashkacha pratis there is. You're following? The only thing that we can say that hashkacha pratis has to be is neibish. And I don't want to say the word hashkacha because neibish is the mashkiach, but the only thing that to say that hashkacha that has to be this way, this is exactly intention, exactly the only way it can be that the leaf had to turn over exactly this way, is because of the mechuyim and Because of the mechuyim and so the more you live in the, in the, in the, in the, and connected. To the boyer, the more you become a mechuyi mitzvah, the more ashkacha you have. You, you follow? This is the generally the shittas shittas harambam. It's reflective. Yes, mm-hmm. it becomes it. You 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 graduate to the ashkacha pratis level because the more ashkacha you live in your life, the more ashkacha pratis you have. Meaning to say that um, the things that you're not connected to Hashem, that is not. If that's a shari mitzvah, there's a there's a shkaka clause. Correct, 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 correct. No, it does. No, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Shkaka clause means Hashem just wants generally what to happen, not the details. Yeah, but Hashem didn't want this this specific thing. Correct. Yeah. Oh no. But if you are walking on the field and you're a person that lives on the mechuyiv mitzvahs, then the leaf turning in that specific direction was a mechuyiv mitzvahs to you. You following? Yeah. Okay. How do we always learn the Torahs of Al Shem? Hmm. How do we learn the Torahs of Al Shem? The, the, we, we, we try to take the Torahs of Al Shem, Torahs of Chassidus, especially the Torahs of Al Shem, and we try to fit it into the same category of, of, of Chira. There was a Rambam, and there was a Ralbag, and the Chassidus was, was a Ramban, and there's a Kreskis, and there was a Yigdari Lari Shoyin, and they wrote these philosophical texts. Yeah, well, I'm going to days, whatever the Sefer is. And then there came a Yid called the Baal Shem, and he also wrote a Sefer. And he said, no, what the Rishonim wrote of this, the Baal Shem said, no, Ashkach HaPratis. Right? It sounds like it's another philosophy. There was one philosophy that was written by certain Rishonim, and the Baal Shem came and taught another philosophy. That's an error. Because Baal Shem is not a philosopher. We just said, we just, that's the whole Torah of the Baal Shem. We're not talking about a philosophy, we're not talking about abstraction. So here, listen, mm-hmm. listen, read what the Baal Shem says. And this is Mamash from Tzvah Sarivash. Now again, the Alter Rebbe writes in Tanya that Tzvah Zerbash is not Bediuk, the Lashem, because the, the Baal Shem spoke in Yiddish. Okay, but this is close, close as possible to what the Baal Shem actually said. A person is Dovik Nakadosh Baruch. And what's a person Dovik Nakadosh Baruch? We're not talking about an abstract. But a person is Dovik Nakadosh Baruch. A person learns Torah, does mitzvahs, is Davka B'midoyisav. A person is Dovik Nakadosh Baruch. This this level, if you're davuk, if a if a if a machshava comes into your mind, you can mistama say that this machshava is ruach kodesh. He says a similar idea. A person learns there. And then throughout the day they wonder if they should do this action or not do this action. And he doesn't know exactly. When the koyach, what you learned, you can know what to do. 
Bilvad, there's a covenant. There's a certain, there's a certain, there's a the condition. She yitama davuk Hashem isbarach. You should be davuk Hashem isbarach. Oh, this davuk Hashem isbarach. Tamei she dey no koyach ater. Avol, avol. However, the Baal Shem writes, avol adam shaylech be kari makam Hashem isbarach. When a person that goes be kari makam Hashem isbarach, which means what does means shaylech be kari? Be kari like we learned in the parshias. Hayluk be kari means vani alachte be kari. Hashem says if you go be kari with me. Bikari means happenstance, right? Vayikar, not Vayikra. Vayikra is Lashon Chiba, which is intentional. Vayikar, right, to the Bilam, is unintentional. Like Lashon Kari. Kari is a happenstance. It's a Mikra Nikra. It's a, it's an hap, it's a happenstance. If you go to the Ebishu with a happenstance, what does it mean you go to the Ebishu with a happenstance? You don't feel Dashkocha. You say, I don't know Dashkocha. Dashkocha, 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 why did I meet this guy? I don't know why I met this guy. I met this guy because I met him. Why did this thing happen to me? Because it happened to me. Why did it happen to me? Because Mikra Nikra. I like to be carried. If you go with Karim Yaakov Hashem Baruch Hu and you say Mikra Nikra, so then therefore, so then the Abishah also goes to him Bakroy. What's Bakroy? Mikra Nikra. Wait a second. We just said the whole Hashkoch HaPrat. So it's like, so here he's saying that if you go back Roy, the Ebesha goes with you back Roy. If you go be carry, first of all, it says in the Pasek, this Pamish is locked in the carry. This, this is the Toichacha. That if you go back Roy, if you say Mikra Nikris, yeah, the Ramon calls, calls it says this, is, this person is an Achzer. Yeah, if you go, if you say Mikra Nikris. So, so what is Mikra Nikris saying? I was like, what did it happen? It happened. It's happened. Like, things happen. If you say things happen, they will talk to happen. It's going to happen. If you believe that your life just happens, it's going to fucking happen. Not faith. It's just gonna happen. What do you mean faith? Nothing. There's no faith. no faith. No tension. There's nothing. No faith. There's no faith. I was like, it's gonna happen. If you believe that your life is just happening, I don't know why it's happening. I don't know why. Why? Why am I married to this person? Why do I live here? I was like, Mikra Nikra. This is what happened. Sabish says, if you're gonna feel this way, that's the way I'm gonna reveal to you. So what he's, what this is a very, very oymik de gevar because of Alshem. Because it seems as though Alshem is saying there's Ashkocha Pratis, Prati Prati Pratis. And here he's saying, wait a second, Olachim Bekeri is not Pratis. So Pshat is. That it's negaya to you. You understand? It's not a philosophy. He's not saying Azoy's Ashkocha Pratis is, is, is this is the way it is. Yeah, this is the way it is talking at a very abstract level. But the Rosh Hashanah says, I'm not interested in that. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about you. Is Ashkocha Pratis? So that's it. Do you live with, do you live with Ashkocha Pratis? That is going to be Ashkocha Pratis. You don't live with Ashkocha Pratis? This is not going to be Ashkocha Pratis. Whereas a philosophy is like one size fits all. Yeah, yeah philosophy is not a theory. This is the way it works. Rosh Hashanah is not saying this works. This is the way it works to you. Belshazzar is revealing that you can actually have Ashkocha Pratis and what do you say? Every single leaf in the world is Ashkocha Pratis. Yeah! If you live Ashkocha Pratis and you see in every single Prat Ashkocha and you live with intentionality in every single Prat in your life then take Ashkocha Pratis with every single aspect in your life. So you take a see this by the way this is experientially by the way. You see this there's certain people in this world that they live with a lot of Ashkocha and have Hashkocha Hashem Yehavach and Yehavach and they take a see that. They give the, they have a munah betochen. They should take care of them every single one. And another person doesn't. Why? This is what he's saying. Imalach to be carry, imalach to be carry. This is the way I'm going to act to you. This is the way you're going to act. If you're not going to look at your life as intentional, your life's not going to be intentional. If you look at your life as intentional, your life will be intentional. Well, what's the link with shura and mitzvahs and chiv? It becomes your life becomes a chiv and some chiv and mitzvahs. That's our shkocha process. Everything has to be this way. Who makes this link? We can chuyim matzias. If you look in the Rambam better, better in the Moira, it's come out the same, the same, the same argument. If I look at my life as a shoyim matzias, he's saying that if you trip and you fall over yeah. here and you don't go comp- with the Hashem, you yeah, know, you know, then so you fell. You fell. Yeah. It, it wasn't Ashgach Pratis. It shame. wasn't. It wasn't like Einar and the Neker with Loi Lamati and Tim Machris and Olam Malo. I'll tell you what the Balshem said. You know what the Balshem would tell you? I don't care. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, talk to him. That's all. I don't care. Well, says, I want to know about you. I'm telling you, you. If you trip on the floor and you don't ask yourself the question, why did I trip? Then you just tripped. Then it's a crowd. It's a it's a gavaldi kavod. It's a it's a gavaldi koimit kavod. And he said, this is this is the, this is the, this is the, what the real. When you talk about you seeing something, it's only when you choose to become aware. That the, the, the why did I see it that actually becomes relevant. So a person walks down the street and sees a million things. Why do you see it? I don't know. No reason. 
What do you see? That's a cry. The moment you stop and say, why do I see this taka? Oh, you're looking at your life as a shkocha protest. They're just going to say, Mazmolo HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the Torah that we had before from, 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 from the Avinacha. Mazmolo HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They're just going to be a shkocha. And that's what the Avinacha brought from the shkocha part. If you don't need, if you don't need, if you don't need, if you don't, if you, if it's not the Shkocha, you can just say it's a projection of me. No, it's Ashgacha. The Abish should put this this vision in your in your eyes because you have to see it. Why do you have to see it? Because you asked to see it. You choose to, to ask the question, why am I seeing it? If you choose to ask the question, why are you seeing it? Then you're going to see it, and it's going to be Ashgacha. This is a gevaldik word. This doesn't say anywhere. It says, and you should know. By the way, it's it's not only what you're seeing. You're going to eat foods that are not going to be good for you. You're going to do the beru. You're going to have levushim that are not going to be good for you. Of course, the Balsham is saying, it's like, he's saying, you're going to eat the, not the right foods. You're going to wear not the right clothes. You're going to not going to be in the right house. You're not going to see the right things. You know why? And then the choices are not going to be connected to you. You're going to, because you're, you, if you live in a happenstance, things are just going to happen to you. Everything's just going to be not, not from the level of the, of, of the hashgacha. This is the this is the this is the only way that the Lord will watch that. And it could be that That's it the could be that huh? It could be it is a Shgacha Pratiyas. The Shgacha Pratiyas is doing this to you because you live like this. Okay, the, you're taking the Eibush Chazvaynus. I got it. I understand. I understand. I'm just saying what what the Baal Shem is saying is the Eibush Chazvaynus is the Eibush Chazvaynus. But the Shgacha Pratiyas is. Lachur, yeah, Lachur, yeah, I yeah, of course, Lachur. That's the Baal Shem. But they say. I'm what well, Balsam is saying. I'm really interested in you. If it's you, you should know that if you trip and you don't ask yourself the question why I trip, then you just trip. If you walk in the street and you see something and you don't ask yourself why I saw it, then you just saw it. But if you ask yourself the question why I saw it and I ask yourself that 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 China, then you should know. Then it's going to be and then the tzitzis are going to be connected to you. This I just want to show also about, about achila because this is the word by achila about. Um, that uh Kilo, so okay, so this so this is the word that we have to really learn a shtickle before. So the toys are Rizal that a person the chais that a person has some food, you should know that where does the person get the chais and the food is from the Moitzi Piyashem. That's why the Moitzi the Bracha is the Moitzi is connecting moitzin the physical gushim atuma. That's the spirituality of eating. So there's two, there's two, there's two, there's two pratim in eating. There's the prat of eating is the food and the bracha. The bracha part of it is the ruchni part of it. That's the spiritual part of it. So the spiritual part of it is the moitzi that your moitzi prepare draws out actually the ruchni shevadavar. And then the leisas alam mitchenayim shein lamad lekim lamad lesivis through the thirty-two teeth, which represent the thirty-two names of lekim. That's Thirty two names of Lakim that are in the beginning of the Torah, that's the way it breaks down the the the, the beer of the of the sparks that exist in the tzitzis of that thing. So there's the there's the ruchni stick of a beer and there's this the 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 the, the, the gashmi stick of beer. Then he goes into a whole arichis about the tzitzis that fell. It has to do with Eilam And um and he talks about Oh, this, this is what I'm going to show you over here. So on the, on the second column, on the left column, he talks about koidem achet la'achar achet. And the koidem achet, uh, there was a higher level of beer. We were ele- the whole thing is about to elevate the doim and semen chayim adaver to the high, the high madrega. Aval da, this is on the, on the second column. Da, ke'afal pishon ha'am avayrim o'yisem ha'idei achilosom. Ve'choizim li'as chelek ever adam mamish. Even though through eating, the, 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 the sparks now become part of you, which means... But actually, you ate it and it became part of you. It doesn't have the elevation as it had before, and therefore, he says that certain things, when you eat, it doesn't become, it's not, it's not like the man, that everything becomes part of the person, but there's a certain part of part, part that has psoilus, which means it has to be ejected, which means that it's not integrated totally into the body. And then he says also within the things that are you, you could eat, some foods you could eat, some foods you can't eat. And then even foods that you could eat, Lamashul Basar, he says only Amar is, is, is only only Tamu Chacham Vlad eat Basar Amar, also Lachem Basar, which means that it's a, it's a process. So there's Nitzaytzitz, the sparks that are connected to you. This is the, the general Toyos Arizal that there are sparks that are connected to you, and when you eat the food 
that uh, that it says Raven Gamsmeim Nashim Hem Tisatov. That Raven Gamsmeim that you think Raven Gamsmeim because you're you're hungry. But the truth is Nashim Hem Tisatov. The, the nefesh really desires. You want to connect to the, the chayes of it to elevate the sparks. Okay, that's the Toy Sari. So which in the Toy Sari, the sparks and the Toys is connected to the Shaman, you have to elevate the sparks. But this board that we learned from Sadal Sarivosh says that if you don't do something with Kavana, so it's not shot that you didn't elevate the sparks. So in Toy Sari, if you don't do something with a Kavana, like that, so you're not elevating the you're not elevating it, therefore the come you can actually become a Yurida. So therefore, Amar Tsakhbasar and Amar shouldn't eat meat, because if you eat the meat and you didn't do a beer, so it'll schlep you down to Madregas of the thing, and therefore he says. He brings on the Mishal different things from Shari Bigulam. You can be, you can be in the Doim, the Tzemech, the Chai. You can have, the, you can be in this Galo. That's that's like the Chesar. So the Chesar is that instead of elevating you, it'll it'll pull you down. And the Balsham, the Balsham says something a, 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 a little bit different, or a little bit more boimic. And he says that what the Pshat is no, that if you don't do things with Kavana, so you'll actually not connect to your Nitzaytzis, which means if you don't. If you don't do things with intention, with ashgacha, then other foods that don't belong to you will, will come to you. So not only that it's that you're not elevating it, you're actually you're you're bringing into yourself things that are toxic. Because if it's just happenstance, so why do I have to eat this food? If it's my nitzaytzis, my sparks that are connected with me, so then I have a choice: either I elevate it through making a bracha and do it with kavana, or chasshon. If I don't do that, there's a yirida, therefore a person can feel very down. Person can feel very, very stuck because they ate meat, whatever the food that they ate. There was no beer. It can create something that's down. That's the flip side. But in Torah's Moshe, it's, it's more even boimic. Not only is it is it, is the thing that's connected to you pull you down because you didn't elevate it, you're gonna actually have something that doesn't belong to you. Well, how could you have something that doesn't belong to you? Where does it come from? Carry. Oh, carry. Exactly, because the word is carry. If machal, if you lack the carry, if you go back cry, things are gonna be cry. Things are gonna be happen sense. And this is the oimik of the Torah's Moshe of what we see, what we eat with our shi'orim, and this goes back, if you look at Chesidosh Yisvarim, Svasam has many, so they can write, that the shoyfet and the is after the seichel. The shoyfet is the seichel, as we started. The shoyfet is the seichel, and the shoyter is the person that, uh, is, the, is the enforcer, that enforces the seichel. Which means the shoyfet is the intention. You, you have, in, 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 if you read simply what we learned from the, from the originally from the, from the Arizal, and that you have to shoyfet and shoyfet and chol shoyfet, so to make sure not to look at the Vorm Royim and not to see things. Okay, so then you need a shoifet. You don't need a shoifet. Yeah? The shoifet is the person that says, look away. Don't eat that food. You don't need the shoifet. What do you need the shoifet? What do you need the Vaz Seichel, the person that has judgment to tell you? It's a Dover, a dover Mos. You know what a Dover Mos is. The shoifet is that. And he tells you, stop. To, don't do that. But you need the shoifet. Because the shoifet is the Seichel. The Seichel is the intention. The Seichel is the Kavana. So shoyfen v'shoyter means the seichel the kavana. If you're gonna have shoyfen v'shoyter, tithen b'shchol shorecha, what does that mean? It means that you do with kavana, you do with intention. Then what you're gonna eat b'shchol shorecha, what's gonna come into b'shchol shorecha, what's gonna be mazman, what Hashem is gonna be mazman to you, is gonna be exactly b'shchol shorecha for your shar, what you need to receive. You're gonna see what you need to receive and eat what you need to eat and receive and feel and hear what you need to hear. And everything will be exactly in tachlis kavana. So why would you need a shoyfen then? Because sometimes, even though you know the right thing to do, no, I'm all the eggs are chata. Huh? If you have the shoif, the real shoif, and you, and you, Hashem is not going to be mazman. No, I wouldn't, say the, I wouldn't say the word is like that. I'm saying the shoif is the, the, the Ebishali mazman. But sometimes, Taki, you know this is Taki the right thing to do. But sometimes the Yitzhari has a little chata of this lesson. So you need something to shoif. You give you a clap and they remind you. But the word is that the Iker is the shoif. If you have kavana and you understand that it's ashkocha, and ashkocha the prati is, then the is is mashkir the prati prati is in your life, and everything you eat and everything that's 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 the oymik of the Torah of Hashem. What he what he started, what he started, a pischu shaar mi yavi goy tzadik. That if when you when you when you create this this the particular shaar of what you eat, and it's also what you smell, what you taste, etc. But what you eat and what you see, you do it with a shoifid and a shoiter. You do it correctly with kavana. Then you should go to the shorim and achet as never pischu shorim the yavu goitzadik midik and eged midah the midik and eged midah is the midik and eged midah the Eibush is going to be very intentional the dam zoichel the shay oil which called tzadik tzadik shiftchol the shorim he call oil and yash the shar the Eibush will give you the shay shorim and you should be zoichel not the also kodesh brach lahanchel called tzadik tzadik lo also love you but lo also love you